Hi YouTube, this is one of a series of videos looking at the documentary A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, produced by Bart Sabrell. You will hear me mention him quite a lot. Check out my channel for other videos in the series, or for the box set where you can watch them all in one feature length video. Part 3 Fake Photos Now we get to the part of the film where Sabrell offers evidence of this supposed unavoidable fakery starting with the photographs taken on the Apollo missions. First though, he makes these photography-related arguments. I'll identify the claims made first, and then address each in turn. And what of the photographs? What do they tell us? On three separate occasions, our office asked NASA's Public Relations Department for every single picture of an astronaut on the surface of the Moon, just during the maiden voyage of Apollo 11. Many duplicates were sent. In all, fewer than 20 pictures were found, including first-hand investigation on site at the agency's vaulted archives. It is estimated that in just the first 60 minutes on the moon, motivated by the tenuous nature of the circumstances, many more exposures could have been expediently taken. Also surprising is the scarcity of photographs of the mission's chief pioneer, Neil Armstrong. There is only one full-body picture of him on the moon, besides this ghostly reflection. This one, taken by an automatic camera mounted on the side of the lunar module. Perhaps he feared liability, should the whole conundrum later become unraveled. In fact, in the more than 30 years since the event, aside from NASA's initial press conference and the occasional brief anniversary remarks where few questions were permitted, he has never given one on-camera interview to anyone, ever. During their time on the lunar surface, known as the Extravehicular Activity, or EVA for short, the Apollo 11 astronauts used three cameras in addition to the TV camera. Mounted on a bracket in the window of the lunar module was the Data Acquisition Camera. This was a 16mm film camera, which Aldrin used to film Armstrong's first steps and first sample collection. He then set this camera to run automatically at one frame per second before joining Armstrong on the lunar surface. The lunar surface close-up camera was used to take 35mm stereoscopic pairs of images of 3-inch square areas of the lunar surface. The 70mm Hasselblad EL data camera was used by both astronauts to take photographs during the EVA. There are 23 photographs which include astronauts, the claim that they are fewer than 20 is incorrect. Sabrell doesn't explain why he thinks this is significant or why he thinks there should be more. The EVA lasted 2 hours and 13 minutes from the moment Armstrong stepped on the moon until the moment he stepped off. Aldrin was on the moon for 1 hour 47 minutes, so this was all the time available for one astronaut to take a photograph of the other on the lunar surface. During the EVA, the astronauts took 123 photos with the 70mm Hasselblad and 17 stereo pairs with the lunar surface close-up camera, 140 photographs in total. We can see from the Apollo 11 lunar surface operations plan that each astronaut had a set series of tasks that they had to perform. Aldrin had to deploy three science experiments and Armstrong had to photograph him doing it. This was to provide data on the locations of the experiments and on the ability of astronauts to work on the moon. This is also the reason that the photos are of Aldrin and not of Armstrong. There are specific instructions in the plan for Armstrong to photograph Aldrin, but none for Aldrin to photograph Armstrong. The astronauts also shot five 360 degree pans to provide location data for the landing site and sample collection sites. In this one, Aldrin captured Armstrong, working at the side of the lunar module. The only photograph from this camera of Armstrong on the moon, and a photograph which Sibrel neglected to mention. So we can see all of the photography had a very definite purpose. To maximise the value of the data gathered, and to help enable future missions. Not to snapshot astronauts. Sibrel mentions a single picture of Armstrong from the data acquisition camera. There are actually over 1,400 pictures from this camera that feature Armstrong, hundreds of which show his full body. Again, I am not sure why this is supposed to be important, 
or how Sabrell could possibly think that this camera only recorded a single image. Neil Armstrong is probably one of the most famous human beings that has ever lived. To suggest he might be trying to disassociate himself from an event of this magnitude is beyond ridiculous. He was photographed many times throughout his career. Even allowing for the years since this film was made, this claim is patently false. Although Neil Armstrong didn't give many interviews, there are a number to be found here on YouTube. The giant step Apollo 11 presidential goodwill tour carried the Apollo 11 astronauts and their wives to 24 countries and 27 cities in 45 days. During the tour they gave many press interviews. OK, let's take a look at some supposedly anomalous photographs. I won't make an on-screen list of the claims made this time as you won't be able to see the photos. As always, I will address each one after the clip from the film. From an analytical standpoint, photographic anomalies have to be sought out with an understanding of lighting and shadows. The most straightforward is simple. When objects are lit solely by the sun, then all shadows, regardless of the landscape, will run parallel with one another and never intersect, as shown by this example. In these seldom seen photographs, obtained from a rarely used auxiliary NASA archival site, it is clear that these scenes were lit with artificial light. These shadows, which are cast at different angles, are evidence that a second light source is being used. In addition, the sun would not cause an isolated hot spot like this, only an artificial light would. It is simply impossible for this picture to have been taken with sunlight on the moon. Here, the shadows are shown to be as black as pitch. And yet here, completely in a shadow, the astronaut is lit up like a Christmas tree. How can this be? In this magnification of an Apollo photograph, a rock, very likely a paper mache prop because of the crease here, is categorized with the letter C. In later releases of the same picture, the letter is gone, probably airbrushed out. Here, a crosshair, which was burned directly into the image from the film plate, and thus should always appear on top of the objects in the photograph, appears behind the object in this scene, clearly revealing a composite of two pictures into one. Even Sabrell's own example shows this claim to be untrue. The shadows here change direction according to the terrain. Here are some more examples. The appearance of a shadow also depends on your perspective to it and distance from it. Note the angle of the shadow cast by the rock in this photograph taken from directly above. Now we see the same rock from a distance of 25 feet. The angle of the shadow has changed. The same rock again from a distance of 50 feet. Now the shadow is almost horizontal. Note also how the shadows of the rock and the nearby stake are different. Sabrell uses this photograph from Apollo 17 as the supposed impossible example. And when we recreate this on Earth on level ground with a similar sun angle, we see the impossible claim is obviously false. These photographs are easily found in all the places you would expect them to be. There are dedicated sections on Flickr and Facebook, along with a number of NASA websites. Why is it necessary for Sabrell to pretend that famous photographs like this have been hidden away and are only now being exposed as a result of his research. In my opinion, there is a common desire among many conspiracy theorists to believe that they have discovered and are revealing previously secret information. The hot spot is a result of what is known as phase angle. This diagram shows the field of view of a camera. The yellow lines show the direction of sunlight, which is at 90 degrees to the centre of the field of view. This is the phase angle. In this second example, the photographer is facing in a different direction. Now the sunlight is arriving from directly behind him, forming a phase angle of zero with the centre of his field of view. Objects on and near this line will hide their own shadows, which will be cast directly behind them, causing an apparent brighter area in the centre of the resulting photograph. This zero phase angle can occur along any line of the field of view, not necessarily along the centre as in this third example where the zero phase angle is at the edge of the field of view. Direct sunlight is not the only light source on the moon. 
some light is reflected from the lunar surface and from objects on it. NASA wanted a photographic record of an astronaut exiting the lunar module on the moon. So Armstrong moved to a position a few feet away to photograph Aldrin's egress. So although the hatch of the lunar module is in shadow, Armstrong is standing in bright sunlight in a Teflon coated white spacesuit. We can see its bright glow from the TV camera. And this is what is lighting up the scene. Got an inch clearance on top of your place. Okay, you need a little bit of uh, arching of the back to come down. The now famous Sea Rock is from this Apollo 16 photograph. A 2001 investigation discovered that this mark does not appear on the original transparency or on copies of it that were made and distributed prior to 1997. It was discovered that a print of the image held at the Lunar and Planetary Institute in Houston was the source of the mark. At some point this print had been scanned and has since been widely distributed on the internet. Close examination shows what looks like a shadow underneath the sea showing that this is probably an eyelash, hair or some other fibre that was on the surface of the print when it was scanned. This rock was actually photographed twice. It also appears in the previous photo on the same film reel. The transparency and copies of this photo have never shown a letter C on the rock. The Hasselblad cameras used on the Apollo missions were fitted with a réseau plate. This was a glass sheet with crosses called fiducial marks etched into it. The film in the camera was pressed against this plate so that the crosses were recorded onto every exposure. This accidental exposure from Apollo 11 shows this well. The precise distances between the crosses are known, so if the image is distorted by the camera lens or by slight movement of the film, these distortions can be known and corrected for. By comparing photographs with similar targets, the crosses can also be used to determine the angular distance between objects. In Sibrel's example from Apollo 16, the cross appears to be behind part of the lunar rover. Here is another example from Apollo 11. At first glance, the lunar surface close-up camera appears to be in front of the cross. But if we look closely, we can see the cross is still there. It's just very faint as it's been washed out by the bright white object behind it. Here are some more examples. We can see in each of these cases the crosses are partially obscured by the bright white overexposed area of the photograph, showing that Sibrel has cherry-picked an image that confirms his bias and not thoroughly researched this issue. In part four, we answer a popular hoaxer question. Why is there no blast crater beneath the lunar module? Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment and subscribe.